Amen. We're turning this morning to the Old Testament book of the prophet Ezekiel. And we're turning to Ezekiel chapter number 48, the last chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter number 48, please. When we come to Ezekiel chapter 48, I want you to come away on down to verse number 30. And we're going to commence our Scripture reading at verse 30 and come down right to the end of the prophecy of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, of course, has received the vision of the glorified city of Jerusalem. Verse 30 says this, And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel, three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And at the east side, 4,500, and three gates and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. And at the south side, 4,500 measures, and three gates, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Issachar, one gate of Zebulun. At the west side, 4,500 with their gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, one gate of Naphtali. It was around about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. It was on Monday evening, Monday night it was, getting into bed, retiring for the evening, when two words came very much to my mind. Tried to get over to sleep, but sleep wouldn't come. These words kept coming to my mind. So much so, I had to get up and do something about it. And the two words were, Jehovah Shammah. Every time I tried to sleep, all I could hear was Jehovah Shammah. Going to be honest with you, I just couldn't remember what Jehovah Shammah meant. And I couldn't rest. Looked up the word Shammah, couldn't find it in the concordance. So I googled it. And when I got Google and I got Jehovah Shammah, there it was. And I found it right in our Scripture reading this morning. You see, child of God, it's a great study to do the names of God. This is our God this morning. It's a great series. Maybe do it some, some Bible class. Or perhaps maybe the Lord may put it on my heart for the Lord's Day morning. I don't know. I just have to come with what the Lord lays in my heart. But you'll remember way back in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, for instance. It was there where God came to Abraham, knocking on Abraham's door one day. And you remember what God said to Abraham? He said to Abraham, Do you see that son that I give you, Isaac? Yes. I'll tell you what I want you to do with him. 
I want you to take him up Mount Moriah, and I want you to offer him as a sacrifice for me. I don't think anybody anywhere in the Bible has ever been tested as more severe as Abraham in that point. And you know, you know the story, don't you? Genesis 22. And Abraham was obedient, and Abraham was going to go through with it until the Lord stopped him at that point. And he turned round, and he saw the ram caught in the thicket by the thorns. And you remember how he offered the ram in the place of Isaac. But you know, Abraham called that certain place a certain name. It says in Genesis chapter 22, 14, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. And Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. You remember what Isaac asked Abraham as they were going up Mount Moriah? Lord, behold, our Father, behold the wood and the fire. Where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham didn't come out with an excuse. He prophesied a great prophecy when he said, My son, God shall provide himself a lamb. And you know that was prophecy. 1,872 years from that very moment, God fulfilled that promise. When Christ became the Lamb of God on Calvary's cross, my friend, the Lord will provide. Do you remember Exodus chapter 17? You remember after the battle of the Amalekites? You remember Moses built the altar after Joshua slew them in the valley, defeated the Amalekites. And you remember Moses was on the mountain making intercession, and Aaron and her were holding up his hands. I think that's what we need today, intercessors. And you remember how the battle was fought and the battle was won. Boys, the battle was won. And Moses built an altar, you'll remember. And he called the altar, he named the altar Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. You know, child of God, there's a great text on this banner this morning. It's Romans 8, 31. And when the battle rages, we can say, what can we say to these things? Of, if God be for us, who can be against us? And if God is our banner this morning, let's look to the banner because the banner is my encouragement. And Jehovah Nisi is my hope. And that's our hope this morning. And you remember the book of Judges where the Lord appeared to Gideon, and you remember he spoke to Gideon, and he told Gideon as to how he was going to be this mighty man of valor that will defeat the Midianites. And after, you remember, after the Lord accepted the offering, Gideon called the altar Jehovah Salom. 
The Lord sendeth peace. Do you know what Jehovah Shalom means to me? The Lord this morning is the sense. The Lord this morning is the source. The Lord this morning is the sense and source of all peace. It's not through the Good Friday Agreement. The Lord is the source of all peace. And I can say this morning, we can put Ephesians 4, 2 and 14, for He is our peace. What about Jehovah Rea? Jehovah Rea. That's found in the original Psalm 23, verse number 1. The Lord shepherds me. He's my Jehovah. Jara, he's Jehovah Nisi, he's my banner. He's Jehovah Shalom. You know, he's my peace. I'll tell you this, he's Jehovah Reha. He's my shepherd. But what about these two words this morning? Because these are the two words the Lord wants to speak to our hearts. And I believe the Lord wants to speak to somebody through these two words this morning. You'll not find them in your Bible, but you will find them if you have a marginal Bible. And the last four words in the book of Ezekiel, this is what they read. The Lord is there. And if you have a marginal Bible and you follow the number across to the margin, this is what it reads, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord, the Lord is there. Of course, the prophecy, the prophet Ezekiel was prophe prophesying of Jerusalem when the Lord Jesus will come and take the throne of his father David. And when the Lord Jesus reigns in Jerusalem, the nations of the world that now hate Jerusalem will one day look to Jerusalem and they'll call Jerusalem Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. And that day will come when the nations will look to Israel and to Jerusalem and they'll say, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. What a day it'll be when the nations will call Jerusalem, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. What a thought this morning. What great two words these are. Wherever the Lord sends us to, whatever the Lord calls us to, wherever the Lord leads us to, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. There are two great words, the Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. I'll tell you, there are two words that you could put upon the fiery furnace. You remember the story of the three Hebrew princes? How these three Hebrew princes, they failed, they refused to bow and to compromise with the laws of Nebuchadnezzar. And you remember how they were warned that if they failed to bow and to worship this great image, they would go to the fiery furnace. Let me tell you something now, child of God. The day is approaching very near where we're either going to compromise or stand our ground in these days. But these three Hebrew princes, they fail to bow. And you will remember, you'll remember how they went into the, the burning, fiery furnace. 
You know, the burning fiery furnace was real. And you know, child of God, this morning when, when we come to something like the burning fiery furnace, listen, Christians are not exempt from tribulations, and we're not exempt from trials, child of God. And the days are fast approaching that we're going to know it. And I believe Christians, we Christians, the church in the Western world has got it too comfortable for too long, and I believe there's a wave of persecution coming very, very quickly. Ah, but you know, when Satan shoots the fiery darts at your heart, and he shoots those fiery darts into your mind, and he shoots those fiery darts into your emotions, how often, child of God, will fall. Maybe this morning there is a brother and a sister and you feel this morning that you're in the fiery furnace for some reason. Maybe it's to do with your health. But you're there. And the flames are all around you. You know, I put myself this morning into Nebuchadnezzar's shoes and I go to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and I look in. And as I look in, do you know what I see? Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. And even those, these, these three Hebrew princes were in the burning fiery furnace. Even though the burning fiery furnace was heated seven times more. Well, the Lord is there. And the Lord turned the place of punishment into a place of paradise because the Lord is there. Joni Erickson, 50 years ago last Lord's Day, 30th of July, 1967, dove into a lake, misjudged, misjudged the depth of the water, dove in, broke her neck. For two years, she struggled with depression. She struggled with suicidal thoughts. She struggled with emotions. For two years, her life was a complete struggle. Until one day, fearing tomorrow, fearing the weeks ahead, fearing the months ahead, fearing the years ahead. In desperation, she opened her Bible. Where did she open it? Ezekiel 48. Where did her eyes fall? Right at the very end. And this is the lesson she learned. Next week, next month, next year. The Lord is there. And last Lord's Day, 30th of July, 1927. Last Lord's Day, Joni Erickson Tata held a celebration service 
Do you know what you celebrated last week? The 50 years of her life in a wheelchair. Thanking God for every day for being there and making her life in a wheelchair, a wheelchair, a blessing. Thanking God for making every day that you had spent in a wheelchair a blessing and for being Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there in the fiery furnace. You could also place those words this morning, Jehovah Shammah, over the stormy sea. Do you remember Acts of the Apostles 27 when God said to Paul, as thou hast been a witness to me in Jerusalem, thou shalt be a witness to me in Rome also. And you remember as they sailed to Rome, there came a great storm, and it says, and the waves were so violent that all hope that should be saved was taken away. And Paul was in a dark, and he was in a difficult place. But you know, child of God, when we come to way back to the Acts 23, verse 11, and when God, when Paul was in that dark, other dark place, it says, the Lord stood by him. And listen, child of God, here's something you need to know. And listen this morning, perhaps next week, next month, next year, it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult. You don't know how you're going to cope. And the sea is going to be rough for you. The Lord wants you to hold on to these two words this morning. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. You remember when God sent Elijah to Zarephath? If I was Elijah, I would have been saying, Lord, can you not send me somewhere better? There's a famine in Zarephath, and you're sending me to a widow woman, and she hasn't two beans to rub together, and you're sending me to her. Never you mind about the famine in Zarephath, Elijah. Learn this lesson. The Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord. The Lord is there. And as they set sail that day, friends, and in spite of the storm, listen, if you're in the will of God and you want to go to, a, and you want, you're obedient in going to a place where God wants you to go, and you want to be in a place where God wants you to be, I'll tell you now, the devil will make it difficult for you. When you want to be in the will of God and obedient to the Word of God, you'll have to cross a very rough crossing. Paul had the Lord's plan. He had the Lord's purpose. Blessed be to God, he had the Lord's presence. The never seen sun for three days or three nights or stars either. The rest of the crew didn't know where on earth or how on earth or where they were going to survive. And I can see the sailors here. They're frightened. I wonder, are you frightened this morning over something? Tell me this. Is there somebody here this morning and you're afraid of the future? You're frightened. 
and you're afraid of what the future is going to bring. And this morning you've come to this service distressed. And for you this morning there seems to be no hope in sight. But for Paul, he learned a great lesson on the stormy sea. He knew the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there in the fiery furnace. I can see him, and a godless Nebuchadnezzar could recognize him too. He's like unto the Son of God. Who told who? Who who told Nebuchadnezzar what the Lord looked like? Nebuchadnezzar didn't go to Sunday school to learn anything about the Lord Jesus. Ah, but he knew who he was when he saw him. The fiery furnace. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. I can see him. And the stormy sea when the waves are going out and over the boat and all hope's lost. Paul looks round and says, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. The Lord's here. And Paul was able to minister to them and told the crew, listen, there's not but one life lost in this voyage. And you'll read in Acts chapter 17 that the ship was broken pieces. The ship ended up in smithereens. The cargo was gone. The ship was gone. Hope was gone. But the Lord is there. When everything else goes, the Lord still remains. Oh, he does. Maybe you're in a situation, dear. Maybe you, brother, I don't know. And your hope is broken in pieces. All hope for a glorious good outcome's gone. No matter how it looks, dear. No matter how it looks, brother. For you, it's still Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. And Darius went to the den to see Daniel. He learned Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Now getting away this morning from the fiery furnace. Getting away from the stormy sea. Coming now into a wee personal note this morning, we can say Jehovah Shammah as far as Christian company is concerned. Oh, why? Did the Lord Jesus not say where two or three are gathered together in my name there? Am I in the midst? Now that's Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. You know, friend, when you're in, in Christian company, you should sense Jehovah Shammah. And when the unsaved walks into Christian company, they too should sense Jehovah Shammah. John Bunyan was tinkering. He went into Bedford. While he was in Bedford, he came across three women. 
and they were speaking about the things of the Lord. And as John Bunyan paused and listened and looked to the lady, the first thing he sensed about those three ladies, he said, the Lord is there. Do you see when you get into a company of Christian people and you talk about heavenly things? Talk about the things of the Lord. Oh, how you can sense Jehovah Shammah there. The Lord is there. Shortly before I came here, I preached in a wee place called Taba Mission Hall. It's away up in, away up in Derry Gunley. It's in the shores of Loch Erne. And I often use the illustration of a wee man that lived up there called Fred Harris. Fred Harris was a man of God I never knew, but I heard Bertie Johnson and, and Alvin Mullen, Pastor Mullen, speaking about him. And I remember this time Bertie Johnson was telling the story of, of Fred Harris. They went to this man's house to they went to another man's house to invite them to the mission. Bertie had just got saved. And this man says, I'll not be next to your near your mission. Follow old hypocrite. Not up the road there. All she can do is talk about people. Him down there, he's running about the Bible. All he can do is rob people. And Alvin was getting it tight. And Bertie stepped forward and he says, What would you say about Fred Harris? Oh, you have me there now. You have me there. You have me there, he said. Well, after I preached in Tabba Mission Hall, I was invited round to this farmhouse for supper. Not knowing whose the house was. And I happened to ask the question, tell me, folks, do you ever remember a man that lived in this country called Fred Harris? And this boy smiled and he says, I did. Now I'm telling you, I says, tell me this, did you know him? He says, I did. Did you know him well, says I? Oh, he says, I did. He says, he was my father. And he says, this is his house. But I didn't have to know that this was Fred Harris's house because the moment I put my foot into that house, there was about maybe a dozen people there and we're all sitting around a big dining room table. But I'll tell you something about that house. The Lord is there. Fred Harris wasn't there, but I'll tell you the Lord was there. Can that said, be said about our Christian company? Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. And those three wee ladies in Bedford and what Bunyan witnessed was the means of him getting saved. You know. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah is not just for the fiery furnace. It's not just for the stormy sea. It's not just for Christian company. I'll tell you this. It's for death's door death's door. I was sharing to William John in the vestry before I come out here. I says, William John, if the Lord tarries, I don't know what way my end will come, whether it'll be a heart attack, a bed of sickness, an accident. I don't know. But there's one thing I do know. The Lord is there waiting on me, and he has it all worked out. David could say, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And if I have to pass through the valley, I have nothing to fear about the valley, because the valley has it up for me, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. I don't have to say the Lord will be there for me, the Lord is already there for me. And the Lord knows exactly as to how it'll be. Wonder, child of God, does death's door threaten you? Does it scare you? Does it frighten you? Don't let it frighten you. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. And you and I don't know what way we're going to end up. 
For some of us in this meeting, we might lose our, we might lose our smile. So you don't know what way you'll end up. Sure, I don't know what way I'll end up. You, you may lose your song, dear. For some of us in this meeting, when it comes to our day, end of our day here, we may lose our very strength. I'll tell you this, we may lose our very senses. Aye, our very senses. Rest on these two words this morning. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. When I come to the river at the ending of day, when the last winds of sorrow have been blown, there will be somebody waiting to show me the way. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. No, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died all my sins to atone. At the river I'll see, he'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. The Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. I'm finished. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there in the fiery furnace. He's there in the stormy sea. He's there in Christian company. He's there at death's door. Ah, friend, I think the greatest place we could place Jehovah Shammah would have to be on our heavenly home because the Lord is there. It's not going to be the golden street that's going to make heaven, heaven for me. And it won't be the absence of death or the absence of sin. It'll be the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. The fiery furnace, Jehovah Shammah, the stormy sea. Jehovah Shammah, the Christian company. Jehovah Shammah, death's door. Jehovah Shammah, my heavenly home. And this world one day will look to Jerusalem and say, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, and the Lord reigneth. And one day the Lord will sit in Jerusalem, and from there Jesus will reign where the sun. But you take nothing from this meeting, you take these two words home with you. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Whether it's the valley or the hill, the Lord is there. Whether this morning it's sunshine or shadow, the Lord is there. Blessed be to God, we have Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. May God bless his word and encourage us through his word this morning for his name's sake. Our closing hymn, five.